cigarettes are bad, everybody knows that, but the idea of uh, traditional smoking um, was like big in the past. Why? Why? Because it was like lifestyle, everybody liked using it. Um, it was a statement almost for some people, but um, you know, recently we realized that you know, when, you, you, when you're a traditional smoker, you almost had over 2,000 uh, different ingredients that you are toxic and harmful to your health. Um, I started smoking in my early 20s, working in the restaurant industry for a while. It was pretty stressful, um, and it got to a point where basically it was just the yellow fingers, the bad breath, the shortness of breath every day, and it was just starting to wear on me and take its toll, so I kind of looking for an alternative. <laughs> Um, for a little while, I was strictly smoking the e-cigarettes, uh, and I found myself in going back to the regular cigarettes from time to time. I just I felt like the e-cigs were a good substitute for certain times for me, just not all the time. And I still craved the nicotine and you know the, the fix. And there's the social aspect of it as well, just having the break with your coworkers and everything. And I'm, I'm sure that played a mental game with me a little bit as well. Um, so the, the early e-cigarettes and, and really most of the current e-cigarettes, they don't really have any temperature control. They've got a hot, a wire, piece of wire that gets red hot and that is in contact with the liquid and it basically evaporates it in a sort of a flash manner. Um, more liquid is wicked in and, and that's just kind of how the, the e-cigarette keeps going. Uh, that technology, it's, it, it works, but it's also, it's really not far removed from just holding a lighter in front of it. It's, you're getting, some of the liquid is being vaporized at the right temperature. Some of it's getting way too hot because it's hitting this red hot filament. Uh, that process, you know, gives you uh, a result and it's a little bit safer than smoking, but you're still burning an awful lot of, uh, of the material. I mean, vaporizers are becoming more popular um, every day, uh, but there is a misconception uh, because vaporizers and e-cigarettes, they work around the similar principle. Uh, but they are also very different from each other. Um, basically, vaporizers are way more scientific and sophisticated devices in terms of um, using your active ingredient or extracting your active ingredient um, out of them. Um, when you compare the two, e-cigarettes are um, primitive to vaporizers. The kind of a larger view of the market is, is that you had either really big units and then at the other end of the market you had things that worked more like an e-cigarette uh, where you're using a small coil, you're uh, heating that up to a, a very high temperature and you can see that the, uh, the heating coil itself actually just gets red hot. It is going to combust whatever it is in contact with. Um, and the only method for modulating that is the user. The user basically starts tasting that it's burning and has to let off and they become part of the feedback system. And when we started working with Talon, um, he was more interested in trying to find something that was really good for portability and really good for temperature control. Basically, Hayes Vaporizer focuses on um, efficiency and ease of use. Uh, for a portable vaporizer, it's extremely important when you take it out, even, even if you use it at home. Uh, it will require you to load, reload, clean, refill your unit at all times. But if you take it to a concert, to a, a party environment, out and about, you don't really have the time to open your unit, clean it, reload it, grind it, do it again. So we, we focused on uh, creating pre-packed concept uh, within the unit. Uh, it gives you dual chambers. It means that you can pack different material um, when you go out. So it focuses on the ease of use and portability. Really, the first thing we did from an engineering aspect is uh, went through every competitor on the market, every serious competitor that we saw on the market, and characterized them, um, both in terms of you know how quickly they heated up or would heat up, how quickly they cooled down, how quickly um, or how well they could maintain the heat while the user was actually using the device. So that was kind of our first step was to get a baseline. Um, from there, we were looking. Well, we want a portable unit. We want it to be small. It's got to fit in your pocket. Uh, how do you optimize your use of energy so that you get the most life out of that battery? Um, and that's really critical. So we did a lot of battery testing as well. What size battery was appropriate? Um, it's one of the reasons that we went with a removable battery in the haze so that you can essentially, you are not slave to recharging it. You can pop a cell out, pop one back in. So we started getting this idea together of 
how do you do multiple bowls? And it, first of all, multiple chambers within the unit. And then from there, this idea of, oh, we could go beyond multiple chambers, just two. We could provide these refillable cans. And now you have the ability to load product, whether it's oil, concentrates, herb, separately at home, bring a pocket full of cans. Um, and you could be standing outside in the wind. You could be with your limited dexterity in a wheelchair. No matter what your situation is, it's very easy to pick product and load it in. It was definitely um, what I was looking for as opposed to a few other vaporizers where some of them would fall short on certain aspects where they may have excelled in others, but the haze was kind of like pretty much everything I needed at the time. As the industry evolves, um, we focus on improving our product because we are in constant communication with our customer base. We develop everything based on customer feedback. Uh, so we blend their ideas into our vision and we change haze. So that is the reason that we are coming up with our third version, uh, primarily driven by consumer feedback.